Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In this video, we're going to configure DNS server on Windows Server 2025. Before we get started with this video, if you're interested in purchasing Windows 10, Windows 11, Microsoft Office, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. So we're inside of my server here. I'm using a virtual machine that I have configured Windows Server 2025 on. And this is the domain controller that we use for demonstration on this channel. So we're gonna start with the typical server manager add roles and features installation. Just, I always like to show you guys again, if you don't already have the server manager pulled up, you can find it by accessing our start menu and it'll either be pinned or we can simply search for it. So again, we'll start in the server manager Let's go to manage and let's go to add roles and features. All right, we're just gonna go through the wizard and we do in fact want a role-based or feature-based installation as our installation type. In the server selection, we'll go with select a server from the server pool and we'll hit next. All right, and then we can see that I already have DNS server installed. I haven't configured it, uh, but we do have it installed here. For you guys, you'll just check this box and then once you've checked DNS server, it's gonna ask you if you wanna add additional roles and features, and we wanna select yes. So just to show you, for example, if I click this, we want to check include management tools and we wanna click add features. So do that for DNS server. We'll click our way through, and then all the way through confirmation, and you'll click install, and then it may require a restart at that point. Now there is one alternative method if you would prefer to do the installation via Windows PowerShell, it's just as easy. We can go into PowerShell itself. Let me maximize this for you guys. And the command will be install dash Windows feature. Then we specify the name and then DNS and then include management tools. And we'll just press enter on that. And we can see that mine is a success because I already had it installed, uh, but you should see success returned there. And it'll tell you if a restart is needed. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so I'll close down server manager for now. And I'm gonna access my run box, which is Windows key together with R. From here, we're gonna type DNS management or MGMT for short, dot MSC, and we'll press enter. All right, so this will uh, bring up our DNS manager. I'll just put this front and center for you guys. All right, so this console gives us a graphical interface to create and manage DNS zones and records. So after installing the DNS role, we need a place to manage it, and DNS Manager is where we create zones and records that map host names to IP addresses. So step three is going to be to create a forward lookup zone. In DNS Manager, let's right click forward lookup zones. So I'll click below here on DC1, that's my domain controller one, is the name of my server. Let me enlarge this a little bit for you guys so you can see it. So once we've clicked into forward lookup zones, let's right click that, and we'll go with new zone. All right, so we have the new zone wizard that's gonna come up, make this a little easier for us. Let's click next. And for this, I'm gonna select a primary zone. Basically a forward lookup zone translates host names like server1.example.local into IP addresses. So with our primary zone selected, I'm gonna to choose to store this in the active directory, which is this bottom option here. I'm gonna click next. We have an option for how we want the zone data replicated. I'm gonna leave this as default for this application. I'll press next, and we're prompted for a zone name. I'm simply just gonna call this example.local. I'll press next. Here we have our dynamic update setting. I'm gonna choose allow both non-secure and secure dynamic updates. Since this is a test or demonstration, this will be up to how you want your server configured. So I'll press next, and this is complete. So I'll go ahead and press finish. We can see our example.local in our forward lookup zone. Okay, so in forward lookup zones, if I right click this, we're gonna wanna create a new host. So we're gonna add a DNS record. Now, if this is grayed out for you, simply double click into it and then right click again here and it should pop up. So we're gonna click new host and let's go ahead and type in a host name. I'm gonna call this server one. We've got the fully qualified domain name and then after that, I'm gonna assign it an IP address. In one of our previous videos, we configured our DHCP server. The only reason for me using 172.29 here in this network is because I'm using Hyper-V's default switch for demonstration. So in case you were wondering about my choice of IP address, that is why I'm using that. 
Now, if we want, we can create an associated pointer PTR record. I'll select that option. An A record maps a host name to an IPv4 address, while a PTR record does the opposite. So we'll be adding a host record once I press this button. This is what lets other devices on the network type in a friendly name like server1.example.local instead of having to remember the IP address. So I'll click add host. We're getting this error because of demonstration. All right, and then I'll press done and we can see our server1 host A is listed here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and test our DNS resolution really quick. So I'll enter Windows PowerShell. You can do this from the server or client. And the simple command I'll be running here is ns lookup. And then I'm gonna enter the name that we just created. So server1.example.local. What we're gonna be looking for is this returning the IP address we entered earlier, which I believe was 172.29.207.51, I think it is, let's see. So I pressed enter and there we see our server example local paired with the correct address. So we've confirmed that it's working. All right, and then the last thing we wanted to show you guys would be configuring a reverse lookup zone. I'll double click into this and then from here I can right click and I'll press new zone. So this is an optional step, but by creating a reverse lookup zone, this is essentially the opposite of what we just did. It lets you type in an IP address and get the host name back. So again, we have a little wizard here. We'll zoom in on for you guys and I'll click next. Again, I will select primary zone and I'm also going to maintain the store in the active directory. I'll leave the zone replication scope the same again. And then the IPv4 reverse lookup zone uh, is what I want. So I'll click next. I'll add the network ID. It's the same IP address without the last box. And I'll press next. I'll select the option that I want here again. And from here, I can simply click finish. And there we can see our reverse lookup zone. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything we covered, feel free to drop those in the comments below. And we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have all those links in the description as well. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas. If you have any ideas of your own, we'd love to know what those are. Most viewer commented video requests get made into actual videos on our channel. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support our channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.